scenario. You are sick and you can't figure out why. Suddenly, some of your neighbors develop the same symptoms and the local health department is stumped. Well, who can you call for help? Every year, hundreds of communities around the world call the disease detectives right here in Atlanta. Channel 5's Randy Travis is here with our special report. Randy? John, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention spends around $300,000 in travel each year for these detectives. They wind up in some pretty exotic spots, investigating some often slippery symptoms. But each time, they must start by winning the community's trust. I think people here are healthily suspicious of, of things and, and people and foreigners. So what's a Danish-born epidemiologist from Atlanta doing here in Wyoming? Well, it's Dr. Lona Simonson's first assignment as an officer with the Epidemic Intelligence Service, better known as the disease detectives. So we're going to try to figure out what would cost them, we hope. She spent more than two weeks here in Buffalo country, tracking down the source of a vertigo epidemic. Do you feel like a detective? Yeah, a little bit. It has a detective flavor. You have to go with what you can, and you have a limited amount of time. Well, I've had vertigo in the past, but I had it. If her hunch is right, Dr. Simonson will find evidence of a virus, much like a flu bug, one that leaves its victims dizzy and disoriented. It would mark the first time anyone's been able to blame vertigo on a contagious disease. It'd be really nice to know what's causing it. Also, be really nice to know when it's going to be over with. Thermopolis, Wyoming is a long way from Atlanta, Georgia, and a long way from the original mission of EIS. The CDC created this special unit of doctors back in 1951 to defend the United States against the possibility of biological warfare. Well now, 160 disease detectives are ready to leave Atlanta at a moment's notice, prepared to face the world's most puzzling epidemics. In the last year, EIS officers have tackled measles in Somalia, diphtheria in the Ukraine, HIV in Haitian refugees. Here at home, they helped isolate cholera in California, tuberculosis in New York, and just last month, an outbreak of bacterial meningitis in Georgia that claimed two lives. So far, they've been unable to pinpoint the source. Dr. Ward Cates heads up the EIS program. I would say of the hundred or so what we call epidemic AIDS that we go out on, much like the situation in Wyoming, uh, approximately 75% we are unaware of the agent that's causing the particular outbreak and the search begins. On his wall, a pair of worn leather soles, symbolizing the field work EIS is known for. Anyone who plans a career at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention must complete a two-year tour with EIS. Sometimes the disease detectives can fall victim to the very mystery they're chasing. What's your last name, Hawkins? It happened in the mid-1970s with a strange illness that years later turned out to be Legionnaire's disease. Not only did the original investigators come down with it, but when they were so sick, we sent out some senior investigators who also came down with the same disease in the midst of the investigation. All the EIS officers eventually recovered. Do you ever worry about contracting the disease that you're investigating? I've been thinking about that. I, I, I guess I have a sort of a feeling that I'm immune to anything right now. So far, she's managed to avoid the vertigo. In fact, her only headache comes from trying to crack this case. So you have to get a, a clue from somewhere, somehow. Thermopolis now pins its hopes on this stranger from Atlanta and the people she works with. Do they feel that with the CDC now involved, that their problems will be over soon, that there'll be a solution found? They're hoping, yes. They're looking at that with some hope that they'll find out what is wrong. And if they can't, how do you tell a community that finally trusts you, sorry, there's still no answer? And I feel very strongly that I, I want to come back with something because I, I feel I, I owe them something too. One last word about the danger of the job. Of all the EIS officers who've gone out on these diseases, only one has died, and that was in an airplane crash in Africa. No one has died from contracting the disease under investigation. Randy, does Dr. did uh, Dr. Simonson find it tough to leave without having the you can answer? Tell. You yeah, can tell. It sounded it, that way. Yeah, she's back home here in Atlanta now, but uh, she really wants to go back out once the blood work is, is uh, settled, once she has a chance to go over that. Hopefully have some answers by the end of the month. She wants to go back out with a colleague, Dr. Ali Khan, when that happens. And if they have some answers, we'll be back here to tell you about it. All right. We'll be here to listen. Thanks, Randy. Very nice report.